The wild kinky sex in ancient Babylon. Ancient Babylon was located in the area of present-day Iraq. Babylon is one of the earliest human civilizations, believed to have originated around 4000 BC. Throughout human history, numerous civilizations have had various bizarre sexual fantasies within their cultures. Sexuality is understood as much more than mere reproduction. This ancient culture of Babylon is known for Hammurabi's code, writing, highly developed sciences such as mathematics, great cuisine, but also interesting sexual practices. Hammurabi turned Babylon into a powerful metropolis, but like other nations of that time, the Babylonians applied some very disturbing practices both in terms of sexual life and in all other spheres of life with very harsh punishments for certain actions in accordance with the mentioned code. Some other civilizations like the ancient Greeks labeled the Babylonians as similar to themselves, that is, they were obsessed with sex. See in the upcoming all the sexual fantasies that the Babylonians had. Be sure to subscribe to the History Facts 3 channel to watch more similar videos in the future and learn about the sexuality of other civilizations. Enjoy the video. It is from the aforementioned Greek sources that we learn a lot of information about the sexual life of the Babylonians. It is an understatement to say that the Babylonians had some bizarre intimate customs that would be a shame in the time we live in. One of the things that was present in the Babylonian sexual culture was sex with strangers. The famous Greek historian Herodotus testified about this custom. Babylonian women would go to the temple and have sexual intercourse with a complete stranger there. It is a certain type of initiation by which girls became women in Babylon. This was an established practice accepted by almost every woman in Babylon. By this we can say that prostitution was ubiquitous in Babylon. The practice of prostitution at the temple was also present in other cultures and dates back to the Sumerian civilization, from which Babylon was later born. It is believed that Babylon had specialized temples whose main role was to achieve sexual pleasure. They were, in a way, brothels where people did not buy girls for sexual intercourse as we imagine brothels and other similar places today. This type of behavior was part of the ritual practices of the Babylonians and this is how they expressed their worship towards the gods. This practice was something that was unique to the Babylonians and some other Eastern cultures and became the basis of their religious experience. In Babylon it was actually shameful and sinful not to have sex. According to Herodotus' testimony, Women who would be sent to the temple to satisfy the pleasure of the people there would have an intimate relationship with the first man who would throw a coin in their lap. It didn't matter what material condition he was in, whether he was young or old, she was obliged to fulfill his fantasies. Outside the temple there was another interesting practice whereby the husband would allow himself to have sexual relations with other men as long as the relation was paid for. Some would call the aforementioned practices violent sexual behavior, especially if they were to look at it from a modern perspective, but this way of behaving and achieving sexual pleasure with anyone and anywhere was widespread. The Babylonians did all this to pay respect to their goddess of sex and fertility called Ishtar. Fertility was a Babylonian fetish. A really interesting sexual practice was present in Babylon if we look at it from our perspective because it is certainly strange that it was a sin to refuse to have intercourse with someone. Since they had such a free attitude towards sexuality, it was quite expected that the Babylonians would organize wild parties. The Babylonians practiced mass orgies that would actually start as light dinners. The display of sexuality was not limited to mass annual or semi-annual festivals. Lavish dinners would turn into orgies after a certain time. These parties are also known from Herodotus' reports. He noticed that as time went on, the ladies would take off their clothes piece by piece until they were left in a negligee. After that, wild nights would follow, and this all led to socially acceptable prostitution. The Code of Hammurabi spoke a lot about the sexual practices of the Babylonians and the customs and rituals that were applied on that occasion. Every marriage had to be about sex. Marriage was not official until the man and woman had an intimate relationship. If a man does not have relations with his wife, then she is not his wife, and this is clearly evidenced by a found stone tablet of Hammurabi's code. Until the partners were imbued with true sexuality, the marriage was not valid. 
We can say anything about the Babylonians, but not that they were shy at all. They were not ashamed of anything, especially when it came to expressing their sexuality. They loved to satisfy their sexual fantasies and fetishes anywhere, anytime with anyone. The Babylonians would have relations very openly in the center of the city. You could see the Babylonians having wild filthy intercourse on the housetops. There was no restraint with them. If they wanted to have relations, they would do it. Since they were a libertarian-oriented culture in terms of expressing sexuality, it was not a problem for them to have relations in old-fashioned houses, on rooftops, and finally in luxurious temples. You can only imagine how bizarre it looks to have people having sex all around you without any restraint. Another interesting custom was present in the Babylonian culture. Babylonians could buy women for marriage in the market. Adult women would be sold to the highest bidder. Herodotus described in detail how this purchase worked. One woman would be highlighted as if at an auction and then the men would compete with bids for her. The highest bidder takes the girl. The girls appeared in a predetermined order. First, the most attractive and beautiful girls would be offered, and then the less attractive girls would be offered in turn, until the least attractive women. This practice is not surprising if you look at all the other customs present in the sexual culture of the Babylonians. Of course, for a marriage with a purchased girl to be official, the man and woman would have to have an intimate relationship. One of the most famous legal norms from the Code of Hammurabi is the principle of an eye for an eye. Sexual behavior was not exempted from such legal norms. In another code dating back to the Babylonian era, there was a legal practice that later differed in Hammurabi's code. If a man was the father of a virgin, and another man had intimate relations with her, the father of the virgin was allowed to do whatever he wanted with that girl. According to Hammurabi's code, this situation would be legally regulated differently. If a man had sexual relations with a virgin who was betrothed to another man, that man would be killed and the woman would be spared. In Babylon, adultery was severely condemned. It was considered a great crime and whoever committed such an act would be punished most severely. Whoever committed adultery in Babylon would be executed, although it happened that persons were exempted from that punishment under certain conditions. A woman who cheated on her husband and was caught in the act would be punished by execution by strangulation. Hammurabi's code speaks in great detail about the punishment of the aforementioned act. A woman who cheats on her husband will be punished for that act as well as the man with whom she committed adultery. They will both be tied with a rope and thrown into the water until they both drown. The said man and woman could go unpunished if her husband did not want to sue her and forgive her for adultery. The king of that time would have reserved the right to spare the man with whom she cheated on her husband. If the husband whom the wife had cheated on did not want to spare her, then the king had no power to spare the life of the man with whom the wife had cheated on her husband. Like most other cultures before the adoption of Christian customs, the Babylonians did not have any kind of stigma against homosexual behavior. Like the ancient Greeks, they practiced it in an extremely open way. In this type of relationship, quite understandably, there was a partner who was dominant and the one who would represent the woman in that relationship. As in some other civilizations, the passive partner in that relationship is looked down upon. Homosexual intercourse represented an alternative to heterosexual intercourse in which there was a risk of pregnancy. Heterosexual couples used to have sexual intercourse practiced by same-sex partners as a certain type of contraceptive method in order to prevent pregnancy. We introduced you to the intimacy of the ancient Babylonians. As in some other civilizations, very interesting and some of them very bizarre sexual practices were present. From a modern perspective, a lot of things would be condemned, but in those days it was quite normal to do certain things when you take the sexual freedom of the Babylonians and that they did not shy away from having relations anywhere, anytime, and with anyone. If you liked this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel in order to watch more interesting videos about the intimate life of other civilizations in the future. Until next time, 